Are we all cured? We got to fucking. We, we, we've got to do the fucking shit that we need for fucking uh, drug abuse. No, 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 no! no. no. Oh, Lord Armstrong, why do I hate thee? Let me count the ways. Lauren is a parrot. And this isn't the main focus of today's video, but Lauren is a parrot. And there are parrots everywhere. Lauren calls women assholes. And that's a term usually reserved for men. You usually call a woman a bitch. It's sort of the equivalent. And if you call women assholes, okay. It just never made any sense to me. And I'm not knocking anybody that does it. But it's just the way I grew up. You didn't refer to women as assholes. I mean, today, the equivalent of bitch is Karen. So, Lorne, he'd probably still call women fucking asshole. I just don't understand it. But in high school, and even in middle school, apparently he was a parrot. So what do I mean? Anything anybody said, he would just spout back. And I think that's why he calls women assholes. He, he knows sea hole. I don't even like to say that word. An asshole. So I think he learned that word from Roy or somebody. And he just regurgitated it over and over for anyone he didn't like. Everything's a hole to him. And he's always talking about sticking it in a hole. I mean, this dude is a straight virgin. But in high, middle school and high school, well, let me just tell you a story about high school. Lauren discovered the word ditto. So he'd be walking around into people's conversations and they'd say something and he'd just pop in, ditto. Let me explain something to you. That is elementary school behavior. I don't, what, you know what? I don't even think I need to explain that. I just need to reinforce it. Imagine a high school guy walking around looking for a conversation to pop into. Somebody says something of any note, any importance, and he just goes, ditto. So yeah, Lorne is a parrot. He just repeats what anyone else says, and that's why he calls women assholes. And I think most of his language maybe came from Roy, maybe came from his siblings, maybe came from movies. I'm not 100% sure, but he is a parrot. Talking about Lorne's anger and how he could deal with it, I think a lot of it deals with repressed depression. And people who have depression, they don't really know how to deal with it, so they just cope. One of the ways they cope is anger. We've touched on this before. You use anger to replace that feeling of sadness or helpless, feeling helpless, feeling hopeless. You just go with anger because it's really strong. Sadness is strong, but not quite as strong as anger. Anger can be a quick fix, and then there's a low. And they have to find something else to do, which can be substances. Some people have hobbies. They go into that denial I talked about, that short-term denial. Lorne, he doesn't know how to handle it. So he just goes to anger, and my advice to him and to anyone who's dealing with depression is stay up, keep up, but allow yourself to feel sad. You can take a day and feel sad and let it out. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think Lorne has ever let it out. He gets on the phone and his only tears are because he didn't get what he wanted or because he's angry and they're just not... They're just not listening to him and, and understanding what he's saying and, and recognizing the fact that he's so smart. If Lorne stops for a second and evaluates, as we've said, where he really is, sadness would take over. But then again, the measuring stick in his family is not that high. What are his reference points for success? Lorne wants do-overs all of the time. And that's another way he copes. He, he wants do-overs. He wants to be able to start over. Think of Jamie Amy. We're going to talk about this, the robot call. Just because they're new and fresh and hip and everybody loves them. I told you my thoughts on them. I'd rather have a real person, but I do respect the hell out of what 
the robot was trying to do and trying to help him and guide him and let him learn about his emotions and how he deals with them, but of course he didn't. In terms of do-overs, he wants one with her all of the time. He wants her to say, it's okay, Lorne, we can start again. And he's always like, I want to fall in love with you. I truly believe he saw the bust, the sting, as a do-over. As nothing but a stumbling block. And he probably wanted to talk to Chris Hansen. I, I just want to fall in love. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I think he sees everything as a chance to get a do-over because he had so many chances. I agree with what I've heard that people just didn't want to deal with him because he's insignificant. And they're like, yeah, whatever, Lauren. And here he comes again. Hey, guys. And he's so happy and loving after he gets a do-over before he starts raging again. Every situation to him he sees as a pathway to success. And I think his family, like I said, they don't have the biggest measuring stick. I don't know what his mom did for a living for real. We can only go by what Lauren tells us. But I know Roy has been in and out of jail, drunk driving, he's an alcoholic. So Lauren, if he does anything just a little better than Roy, he's a success. He's the man. Look at me. I'm better than everyone else. I'm better than my brother Roy. I gotta take care of him. <laughs> when in reality, Lauren's blackout drunk, and I think for the most part, <laughs> Roy has had less blackout drunks than Lauren. But these do-overs, this measuring stick that's so low, and these do-overs are also coping mechanisms for his rage, for his feeling of being unworthy, his inadequacy, everything he has is repressed. And that's why sometimes I talk about him being a serial killer, because he's bottled them up, and he's a virgin, he doesn't really understand sex, he doesn't know how to initiate sex, he doesn't know how to do anything. He thinks, as we said, anything where someone touches somebody else, boom, they're getting busy. Instant virginity loss. I can't imagine. Look, if you've had sex all your life with a lot of women, and a lot of us have, I'm not bragging, because looking back, I'm like, wow, I was a slot. But you don't need it as much. You know, you love it, but as you get older, you realize what you've missed out on. You focus so much on things being physical that you miss the emotional connection. I think that was part of my problem with my my ex and I think Lauren would always have that problem because he's never he's never had sex he hasn't even had the physical part so think about this he doesn't know how to handle the physical part so how the hell could he manage the emotional part those repressed feelings of like I said inadequacy because he's never been with a woman and if he has it's probably been an epic failure I don't think he's ever gotten to the point of insertion. I know that's gross, but I think he couldn't perform. There's too much expectation. I think he's put pressure on himself to finally have sex, but there's so much that emotionally he can't process it. He's overwhelmed and he just can't, he can't get an erection. At least that's what I think. I think his idea of a one night stand is at least kissing a woman. Now, they didn't have sex, but he was with a woman. I really believe that. He did something physical with a woman, and then they never spoke again. And that's what he thought a one-night stand was, or they were at a bar talking. I, I don't know for sure, but I do feel like when he thinks about a one-night stand, he was with a woman in some capacity, no matter how small, and then they never spoke again, because I can't imagine a woman wanting to come back... Okay, ladies, imagine, or men, if you're gay, I don't care. Imagine, or anybody who's attracted to men, aliens, whoever, I don't care. But I want you to imagine, yeah, imagine you're an alien and he's the species you brought up, yeah. Imagine you get home and this melted ice cream cone in the shape of a Yeti takes his clothes off and you see that pubic hair all over his body. You get a good look at him in the light, that little crooked, broken dink. I think he'd probably say, what did I get myself into? I would imagine that's happened in the past too. 
So take all of that. Take everything I just said. Put it together. Lauren has to feel inadequate, as I said, and his depression is real. So how does he handle it? The way I handle it when I get depressed. I can make myself hyper-focused on something. I can use that feeling. I can get... I'm not lying. I can get frustrated at what I'm doing, and I can really bury myself... See, there's a difference between the frustration I allow myself to feel. I I feel challenged. I'm like, all right, problem. You want a piece of me? Let's go. And I attack it. I don't attack people. Lorna attacks people. So there's two ways you can deal with it with anger. Your situation, you can panic, freak out, which is not going to fix your situation. Lauren doesn't panic and freak out, which I find weird. He does it with people. He doesn't do it with situations. His job or anything financial, he's gotten away with it for so long that he doesn't even try. But when it comes to people, because he's so desperate, because he's never had a real, real life girlfriend or true friends, he freaks out and he panics and he thinks about them all day, relationship OCD, friends and girlfriends and whoever else, these catfish women, they got it bad. He's a psycho. So think, think about that. Add all that together. There has to be a moment at some point in the trailer when nobody else is around and that phone isn't ringing and he's got that stupid Bluetooth headset on and he's just waiting, waiting for that phone to ring. And if there aren't any catfish women now, He's going to be waiting forever. Without that phone connection, what does he have? Who does he have to talk to? You know what? Thinking about it, without these catfish women, for the first time, Lorne may feel true depression. He may recognize the situation. He doesn't have anybody to bullshit talk to, anybody to bullshit. So you know what? If there's not catfishing going on, I'd say let it go for a while. With these catfish women, he could just say whatever he wanted to, and he could make himself believe it. The catfish women were going to stick with him no matter what. I want him to understand what he's done, how he's driven everybody else away, because he can't handle his own sadness, his own feelings. He just goes straight to rage, takes it out on everyone, and I would imagine he thinks it's okay because his family has stuck around somewhat. His mom, I mean, the minute his mom told him, Lauren, go away until you fix that anger, I think, I think he might have a wake-up call. But then again, Lauren would blame his mom. Oh, mom's being a fucking asshole. I could just see it. He will forever blame everyone else. He will never truly feel what he should be feeling to grow as a person. And about a depression, I'm not talking about suicidal tendencies but about a real depression. He has to hit rock bottom. You would think going to prison would be rock bottom. Not for him, because again, he thinks it's a do-over, and his whole life has been asking for do-overs and probably getting them, because the people can't escape. These catfish women, think about the song he sings. Then he dramatically puts things down, slowly takes his glasses off, turns, looks down, looks to the right, trying to make shit up, saying things he doesn't believe. I don't regret what happened. I know you don't say you don't understand. He's so tired when he says this. I know you say you don't understand it, but I do. Which is what he loves to do. I was so confused. I, it's the same shit over and over, which is why you know he's had those do-overs. Because it's a rehearsed scenario where he just blurts out the same lines and Because I want it to be a do-over, it's a do-over. Lauren's depression is handled by rage and denial. And until he feels what it's like to hit rock bottom, until he recognizes he has hit rock bottom, and he has a reference point of what success truly looks like, he's going to continue to be the same fucking asshole that he always was. That's my video today. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.